flower friends, it's Nicole from Flower Hill Farm and today I'm making bouquets for my members. It's the fourth week of my member bouquets and it's been whew, a super busy week. Check out my hat. It was the 75th annual Woodsman's Field Days. It happens every year in Boonville, New York and this is the first year it's happened in three years because of COVID. So it was a huge attendance and the nursery that I just purchased is right across the road. So we were parking cars at my nursery. I fit about 80 parking spots there and the Woodsman's Field Days definitely appreciates the extra parking because there's only so much parking and thousands of people attend this event every year, except for the two years it didn't happen because of COVID. Anyway, so Woodsman's was back and it was amazing and there were so many people and everyone was having a good time until it started to pour on Sunday. That wasn't fun, but for the most part, it was an amazing weekend, but I was so busy Friday, Saturday, and Sunday that this is the first time that I've been touching my flowers in almost, I would say five or six days. But we're back and we're making books and I'm so excited today because today's bouquets are featuring my favorite flower. So two years ago, I declared that Roseanne Brown Lysianthus was my favorite flower. I thought, well, Ranunculus was giving Roseanne Brown a run for her money. <sighs> but then Roseanne Brown, she's blooming and she's amazing. Let's check her out. Now, if you follow me on Instagram or Facebook, you've seen plenty of shots of this amazing Roseanne Brown. I'll post a still image just so you guys can soak her in. Speaking of soaked, she is soaked. We got about two inches of rain yesterday and all of my flowers are soaking wet. I only harvested this bucket and some glads this morning. The rest I was able to cut during a 45 minute window yesterday when it wasn't raining. So these Roseanne Brown Lysianthus, I actually grew from plugs from Farmer Bailey. Actually, a few of these are mine from seed. Uh, they were in two different sections of my Lysianthus row. So three, two or three stems were mine that I grew from seed. And then the rest were Farmer Bailey plugs. I don't, didn't notice a difference. I think the ones that I grew from seed had a few more heads on them. It's a multi-headed beast. For the most part, they all look the same. It's an antique muted romance kind of look and I can't get enough of her. I just want, you know, and the vase life on the Lysianthus, it just makes me want to grow more and more and more and more. And honestly, the Lysianthus that I'm growing this year, it's my best year yet for Lysianthus. And I know I'm putting the spotlight on Roseanne Brown, but I do have some other gorgeous stems of Lysianthus. This is a champagne. I believe this is another, I think, honestly, I have to check where exactly where I harvested because, oop, I got some scabiosa coming with me here. Uh, there's also, I believe one's an echo champagne and one might be a pink. I think this one might be a pink, but it was growing in the champagne spot. I am not quite sure. And I have some lavender stems of Lysianthus. Um, let's go over the rest of the things that see, this is the scabiosa. Do you see that? That's like that because it's drenched. I just cut this. It's water is dripping from it drenched. There is another scabiosa. Okay, what else? There are a few stems of lavender Lysianthus in here. Oof, so gorgeous. So Lysianthus, as you may or may not know, does not really have an aroma. It doesn't have a scent. So today for some aroma in the bouquets, I am adding some Sweet Annie, which is very, very aromatic. It's an herb and it grows. Let me grab some right here. Here's the bundle. Here is some. This is like, for instance, here's one stem of Sweet Annie. Sweet Annie is so powerful that being in a car with it can be a little bit overwhelming if you have a bucket of it or something, but if it's just one or two sprigs in a bouquet, then it just has this amazingly sweet scent to it. I'm losing papers. And of course I have a bucket of basil and who doesn't love a bucket of basil? I have my two different varieties that I decided to grow this year, cinnamon over here and lemon over here. This is always um, something that kind of starts conversation at my farmer's market. People walk by my tent and they can smell the basil and it draws them in and they say, ooh, it smells so good over here. And then I say, well, that's the basil. And most people didn't even know that cinnamon basil was a thing. So cinnamon basil and sweet Annie is going to be making up the aroma in today's bouquets. Normally I put lilies in these bouquets, but today I have so many glads and so many other things. And guess who's here? Guess who's here? 
my zinnias. My zinnias are finally here, so I am not going to put lilies in any of the bouquets this week, and I am loading them up with the other goodies that we have. We've got the Benary Giant zinnias. I have two and a half buckets of these babies. I also have some queen limes. Check these ones out. Queen lime are uh, romantic colors. They come in several different variety. This year I'm growing, ro or uh, it's Roseanne. I can't get her off my mind. This year I'm growing queen lime, lime? <laughs> queen lime red, queen lime orange, and queen lime blush, and queen lime peach. I'm not sure if there's a difference between peach and blush or blush and lime or blush and red. They all kind of have that same vibe, but they all are gorgeous. And I think they're going to go amazingly with Roseanne Brown Lysianthus. And I also think that this spectacular gladiola, I know it's gladiolus, I like to say gladiola, is going to just set off that contrast. Check this one out. I've been watching this one closely because it's got almost black right the the bud is black but look at her <gasps> oh yeah this is called black sea and these were purchased from fred nagel i'm sorry i have a friend here hi <laughs> a little moth was on the back of the glide that happens that happens when you get fresh flowers sometimes there are sleeping friends on your blooms okay friend can you go here, go on the bucket. Go in the bucket, friend, thank you. He's on the bucket. Oh, he flew away. Okay, and the moth lives another day. The moth was tagging along on black sea. Do you see? The color is picking up perfectly on my camera. It's this just gorgeous burgundy with a lighter hue in the middle. Wow, so I was thinking, you know, <laughs> pardon me, while I just add Roseanne over here. And look at, I have these um, black scoop scabiosas. Oh my goodness. Anyway, uh, lots going on. The queen lime and this, this whole combination. And then other, a bunch of other people were commenting because I did post a picture on Facebook of this, how amazing a sunflower would go, wow, yeah, look at that. The contrast, the yellow, and this dark, deep, beautiful, I don't even know what to call it. It's, it's like a black burgundy. It really is. The Black Sea, that's what I'll call it. Aptly named. Okay, what else do I have? Uh, obviously, I have buckets of gladiolas. They're going to town, blooming like there is no tomorrow. I have got so many different colors. I'll show you guys the new frizzles that I have this week. We have a white frizzle, and I, this peachy apricot one, I think I had last week, but then let's show this one right here too. Oh, wow. Okay, so these are more of the frizzle varieties, and my camera, this is not true to color, guys. Give it a second to catch up, there it goes. Okay, that is the beautiful apricot, the gorgeous white frizzle, and then this is a chartreuse apricot. Um, beautiful. I adore them all. And they all kind of go well together, don't they? Okay, any other frizzles in here before I put these back to show you? Because remember, I'll be doing a frizzle sale of these bulbs in the springtime. Who is this? Who is this? This looks frizzly. No, this was a Nagel one. More white ones. More of the ones that I've already shown you guys. And oh, here is a pile of those Black Seas. Wow. Oh, here is an example. So this is what the Black Sea looked like before it opened. Focus, focus, focus. So all I saw was this black bud. Impressive when she opens, right? Another bucket of zinnias right here. There's a bunch of those queens in the middle. They're gonna be amazing. Another bucket of gladiolas, a lot of white in that, a lot of white, because I wasn't sure if my neighbor who was getting married was going to use them. So I have a lot, a lot of pure white. I should actually call my florist and see if, see if they need any of the white. They're always looking for white glads. More gumfrina, and then over here actually, I have in with the sunflowers, I have a couple of new colors of gumfrina. We have the salmony peach color, and then a light pink, and then a dark purple right here. 
it's a dark one. And then I have some status and then I cut some sunflowers. And then I also did a couple of celosia stems. My celosia is really slow and really short this year, but I do have some nice stems coming up with some smaller plumes on top. And I thought, let me do a test on this. I cut them yesterday morning and they're holding up. So I think I could use these even just for a foliage. So I'll definitely be cutting more of these for later in the weekend for the farmer's market. Okay, that's about our ingredient list today, guys. I'm using a smaller variety of flowers just because the zinnias are just gonna have a huge impact. And when you're using zinnias in bouquets, you don't really need to use a ton of them to make a big impression. All right, let's start making books. I'm definitely starting with this uh, the Black Sea. I'm definitely starting with the Black Sea. I am going to use a couple of them and I will use, oh wow, look what this apricot one does too with it. Oh, that's special too. Okay. All right. Okay. So I am starting with the Black Sea and an apricot lisianthus. I might actually pull in an apple. Oh, I'm pulling in an apricot gladiola and then I'm gonna pull in some of these amazing, I'm gonna grab a chartreuse zinnia, and then also some of the queen limes, and round that out with that. I'm gonna grab some sweet Annie. These are so cute. I'm not exactly sure which, these in the queen lime series, I'm thinking it's queen lime blush, I can't remember exactly where I picked it from since they're all kind of together. And I'll put in a couple of sprigs of the Sweet Annie. The Sweet Annie just really adds so much to these bouquets. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. All right, we'll do a couple sunflowers. Yep. That's perfect. The Carmine Gamfrina. Couple pops here, couple pops there. I'm gonna do three of those. Oh wow, look at this, guys. This zinnia has got like the, it's missing a petal, but I don't care. It's still beautiful. Using it. Yup. All right, I'm gonna put a couple hot pink zinnias in here as well. Oh, wow. These are gorgeous. Let's see, I think we need basil. I'm gonna go with the cinnamon basil, keep the dark vibes going on this one. One on this side, one on this side. Let's see, what do we got for status? Ooh, I've got a bunch of apricot status. I think that goes in nicely. Let's see. One more peachy zinnia. Look at this one, I can't even. That is beautiful. This is, it must be a queen lime orange. It must be. Okay, I'm gonna add a Roseanne Brown Lysianthus right there to round out this darling. The sunflower needs to face out, which, there. There! I'm actually gonna add another Glad um, because it's, some of these are a little bit more open than I normally would use. Um, so it'll just give them a little bit extra. Plus that evens it out. Evens it out. Everybody's getting more today. More, more, more. We've got my bouquet station over here. I have my cutting device. I have rubber bands and I have a packet of flower food. And then I use 18 by 18 inch pieces of paper. They are pre-cut. I buy them by the box. And then I've pre-folded 13 of them because that is how many bouquets I need to make today. And staple it once, staple it twice. Uh, 
and this is headed out the door. Well, it's headed into the car. It's already out the door. I'm on the porch. Okay, I already have all of my buckets filled with water for transport. Let's make number two. I'm gonna go with a purple, darky dark purple. Yup. I'm gonna go with purple and white. Purple and white does not bother me at all. We are gonna put some lighter purple zinnias in. I'm gonna use a white zinnia as well. Two sprigs of Sweet Annie. Woo. We're gonna come back here for some sunflowers. Mm. This yellow with these purple and white, oh yeah, <laughs> that is great. I'm gonna add one more sun. Even it out, round it out. Okay, we're gonna go with another couple of queen limes. These are so easy to make today, not even joking. There's just something about these ones, something about them. They're just, and I'm gonna add the dark um, purple gumfrina to these ones. Yes, these ones, they're, they're just so cute and they're perfect in this. I'm gonna add one more sprig, one more stem of Lysianthus as well. Wow. <sighs> that is one stem. Like that's the impact that she has on some of these. It's amazing. Okay, let's see, what else? Oh, I'm gonna do, do one dark black scoop for interest. Put it right there. She's on the short side. Mm -hmm. Basil. Yup. Got Sweet Annie in here. I, think, I feel like adding another zinnia. One more zinnia and it's gonna be this one. Yes. All right. I'd be happy with this on my table. A purpley white one. Okay, let's do peachy apricot. Peachy, peachy. I'm gonna grab the chartreuse. This one's on the not as open side. And then that one. Oh yeah, we are going to add the corally. Oh wow. <laughs> these zinnias. I actually have several customers who claim that the salmon apricot ones are their favorites. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this champagne colored uh, Roseanne, I mean Roseanne, everyone's Roseanne today. Sweet Annie, um, Lysianthus, not Roseanne. She ain't Roseanne. Okay. I'm gonna add a couple of the dark, dark scoops. And then I'm even thinking about Yes, I'm gonna add one of the blacks in here just to, I don't know, to ground it. It needed a ground. And a second. <laughs> Everybody's getting more today. And then I'm gonna come in here with some of these queens have that center that matches. Oh gosh, that's lovely. Just sets it off. And honestly, doing that 
allows me to bring in a, a Roseanne Brown. I'm gonna put it on the other side though because this Lysianthus, I want to kind of be on this side. Okay, we will add a couple more of the Queen Limes. And one more of the Coral Color. And call that one a day. Basil, can't forget the basil. Using the cinnamon to bring in the purples. This one has a buggy leaf. That one just gets clipped off. And then this one can go on this side, so, wow. It's just full of deliciousness. Veda is coming with me for delivery today because we are stopping for lunch at her favorite restaurant. <laughs> like my boots today. It is, like I said, we had two inches of rain yesterday. So everything is wet. I was not risking it. These colors are just amazing. Oh, that basil. All righty, let us go with another dark. Oh wait, this one is a pink. This one's a pink. We haven't done a pink scheme yet. Maybe I can do a pink with a purple. I can do pink and purple. I most certainly can. Oh, already just with the glads, I'm happy. I am so happy. I'm losing papers! No! My stapler, please support me. Support me, thank you. Where's my coffee? Okay. Pinks and purples. This gives me so many options, but I think I'm gonna bring in the purple Lysianthus and the lavender Scabiosa. I have two stems of this purple Lysianthus. Okay, and then obviously, I mean, I can use any of these zinnias, but I'm grabbing her and her and her and her okay we need sweet annie who else gumfrina these pops of pink wow this is just stunning i love to see what my customers do with the flowers because a lot of times my members um, to be honest, I hear people saying, oh, your, my flowers from last week are great. I gave these ones to my neighbor or my aunt or et cetera, et cetera. I love hearing that. I'm gonna use this sprig. <laughs> this is a time where the pink status is working. Pink status works here. So I love seeing where the flowers go. Some of my members will send me pictures of their neighbor with the flowers or et cetera, et cetera. I'm bringing in some suns on this one. I think it's perfect. Oh, wow, yes. So I did a wedding over the weekend. That's another thing that I was busy doing. I supplied flowers for 32 centerpieces, 32. I did not arrange them, but I supplied flowers for 32 centerpieces, which that's the biggest event I've ever done. It was my neighbor and we bartered. We bartered. I do have a couple of sprigs of feverfew down here. I'm gonna add one little pop of feverfew into that. Some lemon basil. Because there's already enough purple in this book. That is awesome. Okay. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? This little... <laughs> Look at the wee babe. Look at the wee babe. The wee babe's going in. Yes. I love hiding tiny things in the bouquet that they don't notice right away. And as they're sitting there with it on their table, eating dinner or whatever, what have you, they'll be like, oh, I didn't see that flower yesterday. So, little surprises on every corner. One more. 
Oh, I can't even. Ooh, this light lavender. Yup. And this one's just starting to open. I'm gonna take off that. And I'm gonna add it with some dark purples. I have two right here. <gasps> yes. So I have a light lavender and a dark purple, which opens me up for more over here. Definitely adding a couple stems of Roseanne Brown. Look at this stem. Look at the stem. Sweet Annie. Ugh. Who are you? Oh yes, the lavender scab. But look, I also have this scab, but I'm gonna let them, I'm gonna save this one. No, I'm gonna use it. This is a, a beautiful pink scabiosa. I'm gonna add it right in there. I think she fits nicely. Okay. This celosia I'm gonna add as, as well. It's a, I think it's called a Texas, a Texas plume. It's a very mimosa color. I like it. Speaking of, we'll add some of also this light apricotty gumfrina that I have not been able to use yet. It just earned its wings by being tall enough. <laughs> All right. Oh, this is perfect. Look at the light color on that zinnia. All right, I'm gonna, oh, no foul, no harm, no foul. Load this one up with all of the zinnias. So I have some zinnias that almost look like they're a unicorn. They have, I think the next one I'm gonna, I'm gonna bag it and save seeds for it. It has just a, I don't know, a beautiful difference in the coloration. Every single flower on this plant is like this. So I think I might save the next one, um, like bag it and try to save the seeds. <laughs> All right, we've got Lysianthus, we've got Gladiolas. I'm gonna add a couple of stems of um, that right there with the queen lime. The queen lime just goes with everything. I have put the queen lime in every bouquet that I've made today. All right, basil. Hitting the basil heavy today, hitting it heavy. This one doesn't have sunflowers. I'm actually gonna put this status in it as well. I love the status because the it's so long that you can literally use one stem and put one sprig on this side and the other sprig over here. Um, this one's sad, it has broken. But this is the apricot status. It just goes with everything. We've got this sunflower. And this sunflower. Okay. This is kind of a kaleidoscope of colors. Let us go with another peachy one. This one's got top starting to open. Oh, this is what I want to do. I want to do a peachy one with the black sea. Oh, oh, oh. oh yes. Mmm, that's, that's special. This is my base color. This is the fusion. Here she is. Oh, wait a minute. I found another champagne Lizzie. And look who's coming with me. These girls. Swim here, babies. Okay, we're also gonna bring in some of the chartreuse queen limes. I'm gonna grab three right off the bat that are speaking to me. Hello, hello, hello. Oh yes, that's amazing. Which brings room for the queen. I mean, she is the queen. She's Roseanne. Sweet Annie. Here, I do have a couple of other, I'm gonna go ahead and put this ABC yellow and then a sprig of 
status, and then this fever few pop of white there and a pop of white here. Let's see, who else? I love the pink, the dark pink gumfrina with most everything. Don't know why, it just looks good with everything. I've said that multiple times. Who else? I don't know. Oh yes, this one for sure. Wow, look at that. Just makes me happy. Okay, we are adding basil. This is one stem of the cinnamon basil. It's starting to get really good. And I cut this 24 hours in advance so that it hydrates and doesn't wilt on me. Because sometimes it will, but it bounces back usually. Um, yeah, I don't... <laughs> I'm gonna add one more of this blush. The Queen Lime blush. So it has two stems of Lysianthus. I don't even want sunflowers, but I guess I'll see. I don't feel like I need it. Oh, okay. Yeah, you look good. I think it looks good because it's a, it, like they're mini sunflowers, so they're not overpowering with this color combination. Okay, so I have a little sunflower here and a little sunflower there. Okay. Drop my stapler in the water bucket. It's okay. Well, now my papers are gonna be wet. Wow, this stash of books is amazing. Okay, so I actually do have some reds, which, all right, let's do this. Somebody's gonna be a red lover, right? Because I've got those deep, dark red zinnias as well. Um, and these are just stunning, and there are still seven or eight on top that will open up. And I love the red, white, and yellow. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the red, white, and yellow with um, the zinnias, which I've got this dark red zin. They're beautiful. Yep. There's another one. There's the third one. The dark red zins are something special. As far as Lysianthus goes, I have two stems of ABC yellow down here. That looks great. We've got a stem of apricot status. Apricot status looks good with everything. Oh wow, this is the most perfect, the most perfect zinnia. And let's get some uh, yellow in here. Oh, she needs to go like right in the front. Yes. All right, let's hit it with suns. So I want the suns to be a little higher in this bouquet so that they're a little bit more visible. Well, that's what I'm doing. And fortunately, they are sturdy enough to do that. And here actually is a white zinnia. I'm adding that one to the party. And I think a couple pops of chartreuse would round her out nicely, along with a sprig of Sweet Annie. And, wow. And um, Basil. I wish I had more Feverfew, because I would add Feverfew to every bouquet but that rain crushed it and I didn't have it harvested in time. Wow. Okay, I'm actually gonna add the orange gumfrina to this one. That is a fall favorite and I haven't been able to use it much yet this season. I can barely hang on to this one, it's so packed. Apparently my camera shut off without asking me. <laughs> but still this bouquet. But I added, guys, I added orange zinnias, orange gumfrinas. There were two heads on this one. Look at this basically perfect. 
Ha, yeah! Look at this basically perfect orange zinnia. Amazing. Ooh, hummingbird. Is it gonna come to the flower? Probably not. Okay. Wow. That's huge. It's huge. All right, I'm gonna work with the chartreuse. And nope, I don't want this one. Sorry. The chartreuse and dark. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. This is my favorite one already. Chartreuse and black sea. This black sea coming home with me. I think I might make a bouquet for myself today because this is my favorite flower. How could I not? Guys. Oh. There are other ways you can work with glads. You can cut them in half. You can cut completely the tops off so that they're only showing um, the flowers. But I like the statuesque ability and the structure that they bring to a book. So if one of my customers doesn't like the glad, then they can take it out or cut it out themselves and um, more power to them. This is my favorite. It needs white. It needs white. There's a, a sprig of white status. Uh-huh. Oh, hi. <laughs> hi there. Hello. Hey. Guys. Oh. Look at this. Weep. <laughs> Stems a little. I still love you. I have two white zinnias. I'm bringing them in. Oh my, there might be a fight for this one. So I dropped off the bouquets last week at 12.55. Pickup starts at one o'clock. There were already five of my CSA members there waiting. <laughs> and they were like, ah! All right, where is Roseanne? Okay, I have two stems of Roseanne on this side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move it because I am gonna um, wrap the book on this side. So I want that to be exposed and she can come right here as well. <sighs> this needs to go up a little bit higher. Actually, I might put her in the back. Wow. I'm emotionally attached to this bouquet. Cinnamon basil, not once, but twice. Okay, a couple more pops. Mmm, my hand smells amazing. Okay, I think this one's all set. Nope. <laughs> yeah, definitely needed a little fever view. Okay, last thing. This stem of Celosia right there, it really anchors it and, and just reflects the dark on this side. Okay. I often say to my flowers, You'd even look good in a brown paper bag. Oh yeah. <laughs> you get a bucket. Let's see who's left. One, two, three, four, five left. Let's do another peachy peach. And I would like to grab you and you and you. And I'm feeling like you need to be paired up with Something a little dark. Okay, here's a dark pink and another. Yep, you're gorgeous. Uh, the amazing matching, not matching, but complementary zinnias. They complement each other so wonderfully. Brad is texting me, asking me if the lawn is dry yet. I shall tell him, no, it's boggy and soggy. Still wearing the bogs. Ooh, wow. These colors are amazing. Let's sweet Annie this up here. 
I used to work with somebody named Annie and she was very sweet. Sweet Annie the herb. Ooh, oh, I'm mad now. I should have put this one in the other book. The Feta Morgana Scabiosa. It looks dirty only if you don't use it properly. But it looks amazing with Roseanne Brown. I'm not using it in this book though because it just doesn't, my, it's not a flow rider. It doesn't flow rider. <laughs> that does though, hello. I am so excited to tell my customers that it's um, any, any bouquet this week. I felt like I was limiting my, my people who said, please no lilies. I only made a couple of bouquets that weren't with lilies and I feel like that was limiting their selection and I didn't want them to feel like a, a, like a lesser of a, a CSA member because they only had one bucket to choose from instead of the eight buckets that were there. Oh, you're coming with me. This one, I'm, I'm adding this glad. Right there. Yep. Okay, so this is a whole lot of deliciousness in here. Need the basil. Need the basil. Going with the lime. Going with the lime. All right. Wow. Yep. She's good. Okay, we have these awesome purpley ones left. Take the bottom ones off that are a couple of days old and I'll add the barely open dark purples that I have. I have two of them. So this will be a dark purple, light purple one, which I've done before. So I will add all of the purples to this one. There'll be another purpley, another purpley baby. We've got the Roseanne Browns. The sweets of the sweet Annie. It's a nice big stem of sweet Annie. Now, some people um, can have an allergic reaction, or maybe not even allergic reaction, but um, just it might be too strong for some people. I am going to put in. I'm go ahead and add some purple zins, and I'm also going to add a huge spray of purple status, some sunflowers. I think it needs a pop of yellow. In fact, I might even put that yellow gladiola in. <laughs> the purple and yellow book. This one's lovely, just opening up. The weather really has just done a number on all of the stems. My straw flowers look awful which is not good since I have a photographer coming here this weekend to take professional photos of people in my flower field. <laughs> so that's no bueno, but people are very understanding I've found. So hopefully it doesn't cause an issue. There are gonna be pretty spots on the farm still. It's just frustrating when, um, when you are hoping for a better spot and it doesn't come to fruition. This is awesome. All right, some gumpf. It's, where's my dark gumpf? Where is it? Oh, it's right here. Okay, oh wow. Dancing in the moonlight. Okay, we've got dancing gumfrina. <laughs> all over the place. I'm gonna add a couple of the Queen Limes to this purpley book. Oh, th just the, all the different shades of purple in this bouquet are awesome. Shades of purple and pops of yellow. Did I basil this? No. I shall give it cinnamon for even more purple depth and aroma. Making good time, making good time. No! Okay, well, <laughs> my papers took off. Three left. I'm gonna do another peachy pink one with the darks again because I love it. That's amazing. Hi. 
Hi. It's three. Yes, I have three bouquets left. Okay. And then we have to load the car. Okay. Thank you. Someone's anxious for lunch. Yeah, I want to see that. I know. She's anxious for lunch. We're going to go get sushi. And that's her favorite. I am going to add these dark, heavy heads. We'll see if they recover. If they don't, they still look cool. Um, kind of drooping. Um, but they should dry out. <sighs> Where's the blow dryer? Oh, they still look cool. Yeah, they're awesome. All right, we're going to do some hot pinks. A lot of hot pinks, actually. And then a couple of corals to cheese Louise. Tie them all in together. A couple of corals. Yeah, these are stunning. Stunning this week. I'm so excited. Let's see if a pink goes with this book. It actually, I don't hate it. All right, pink's going to win. I'm gonna do a purple one on this side. Might as well. Okay, some of the queen limes. We've got a couple more to bring in that chartreuse color. Yes, we've got a roseanne brown. We've got two roseanne brown. We'll add these gumfrina pops all the way around. Look at the just, I've been so impressed by the Carmine Gumfrina this year, honestly. So impressed. I'm gonna add basil. And this one is rounded out. One basil, two basil, three basil, four. Just two. Just two. Wow. Wow. Whew. White. Let's do white. Two that have yet to open. And then this one is opening. Who do we want to pair with them? This pale, pale pink? I don't know. Oh, I have two of this um, almost magenta color. So I've got two of the magentas. Oh yeah, I think that'll be nice with the Roseanne. Give two Roseannes. And that's all I'm gonna have. <laughs> I only have two left. I don't have any for me. No, I do because there's another big section that's about to burst, so. Okay, all right, let's do this. I really love the light. I have a series of these lilac zinnias. These are perfection with this combo. Wow, perfection. And there's a couple more over here. <gasps> oh, wow. Okay, so this is turning into a light purple, magenta, creamy white gorgeousness. I actually don't have any more Sweet Annie. So I'll add some Fever <laughs> Yelp. What about this purple status? What's the status of your status, ma'am? It's delicious. Okay. All right, so we've got this stem that's broken. I'll put that in the bottom. The stem that's down low, I'll put this in the back. And then the main stem, I'm gonna shimmy it down the middle. That's a, almost, it's a near impossible feat. It's going down. Shimmy, 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 shake. Oh, wow, yes. Hello. Okay, who else? Who else? You are not coming. You're dirty. You're dirty. You're dirty. Okay, let's do the pops of Gumfrina. All the way around. There's four more. Didn't mean to do four more, but they opted in. They ran and jumped right in. Dude, who was that? <gasps> Purple status, saved, got it. Oh, basil, basil, basil. All right, this Zinnia, I'd like her 
to be like a centerpiece. So I'm gonna Oh yes, okay, okay. Oh wow. Uh, paper would be good. Paper would work. Paper would help. Paper would be great. Isn't she lovely? Oh, that basil's awesome. I love this combo. Okay, one more. Okay, this one's going here with you. Did you guys have similar vibes? Okay, wow. How am I gonna get these in my car today? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and 13. I have lots of peachy pink zinnias left, so let's grab the peachy pink glads and a couple of the whites and make this one happen. Okay, so I'm, I'm adding a bunch who are you of ones that are open already? And then I'm grabbing a couple that have, are just starting to open up. So this one's kind of got a few extra glads um, and that's okay. All right, peachy pinks. Bringing in some darks. Oh, wow. Yeah, all of those, all of those things. And then, oh my goodness. That is one stem of Lysianthus. Here I am sitting here going, I had two stems left. I only have one. And that's going right there. Okay. Whew. A little bit of this. A little bit of that. A little bit of feverfew. I have a couple of stems that I can use in this one to make up for the lack of Sweet Annie. Wow, that's so pretty. Okay, and then a couple more on this side. This coral is so good. That one's just got a little bit. I think I'm gonna try the orange gump. It goes well with the corals. Just a hint of a different color. A horse of a different color. Okay. Peaches and pinks and whites. I think I'm gonna add a couple of these other <laughs> gumfrina as well. Cause I got them and while I have them. And then I do have one sprig over here of apricot status that's going right on the side okay guys this is it okay and this is the final member bouquet of week four of my five week membership and i am so excited that not only these bouquets are huge yet again but everybody can choose from anything today. Uh, awesome, that glad has my heart right there. I don't even know who she is, but she has my heart. I would choose, I would choose everyone, but I'd also choose that one and that one. I have two favorites, two favorites for me, these two. I'll show you this one and this one today. Oops, there's a little plastic thing in here. These two are my favorites today. That glad is amazing. And overall, that one just something else. You wanna do a photo shoot? You'd look good in a paper bag, babe. We have one more week of member bouquets. We'll see you then. I'm the clemped with this one, the clemped. Okay, yeah, I love you. Let's do a photo shoot later. Breaker Breaker 1-9. Membership, people, people who are in membership. My members, it's my members, it's member day. I got two turntables and a microphone. He just peed on me. He just peed on me. I have moth pee on my finger now. Um, 
Yeah, that was gross, but that's okay. And the moth lives another day.